Good morning, everybody. My name is Miss Debbie. Uh, actually, my name is Debbie Armstrong, but the kids at the store that I work at call me Mrs. Debbie. Mrs. because I'm married. I do story times on Wednesdays and Saturdays at this big bookstore called Barnes & Noble. And this is the name tag that I have to wear there, in case you're wondering why I've been holding this the whole time. I work at this big old bookstore that's over there across the street from North Park Shopping Center on Northwest Highway. Have you ever been out to North Park Shopping Center? Have you heard of it before? Yeah? yeah. Well, that's where I work, so if you're ever in the store, just come upstairs because it's got two stories. One, the first floor, and two floors. So you just come up the second floor and look for me, okay? All right. We'll get started this morning. This morning's story, I'm going to put my name tag back in here, is this is Madeline in America. This is another one of the Madeline stories, and probably the very last, by Ludwig Bemelmans. It's actually been put together by his grandson, John Bemelmans Marciano. What a name. Isn't that a mouthful? Pretty long, huh? But anyway, this, it says it's Madeline in America, and it's several stories, actually. But the, I'm going to read you just the first one, and it takes place in our state. Does anybody here, can you tell me what state it is we live in? Texas. We live in Texas, right? And the city that we all live in here, where we go to school, this is Dallas, right? Big D, Dallas, Texas. Now, there are certain things that I wanted to go over with you real quick that I have in my bag this time that have to do with Texas. The first thing is, I'm told, and the book tells us here, that if you're a true Texan, you've got to have a bandana. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah, yeah you have one maybe? Well, um, usually people put them around their necks. Um, but anyway, this is kind of how you wear it. Something like this. What do you think? Do I look like a Texan more like this? <laughs> Very good. Cowboys, right? Cowboys is right. Now, what else do I have in here? Let me see. Oh, wow. Look at this cool thing. Oh. Yeah. You know what? Yes. A Texas Ranger maybe might wear this. Or a sheriff, right? They call it Texas the Lone Star State, too. So there's lots of reasons for me to wear this today. Now, what else do I have in here? I think you said it. I'm just going to, yeah, these are my husband's cowboy boots. Let's hope they fit somewhat. He wears a size 10. Oh, what's in there? Oh, oh, can anybody tell me what these are? Handcuffs. They're called handcuffs. I don't, I'm not sure what the word in Spanish would be for hand. Oh, my goodness. This is the same word for wives. I thought that sounded curious like the word for wives in Spanish. I'm not sure I care for that. <laughs> you nut. Handcuffs. That's pretty cool though, isn't it? Now let me get my other boot. What else do we have in here? Oh gosh. Well, I'll show you that in just a minute. Boy, you're just not going to believe what that is. I believe in using the imagination. And you know what? I don't always have very much money. I don't know about you, but Really and truly, I don't always have very much money, so I have to depend on my imagination. So, I make things. If I can't afford to buy them, I make them. Luckily, my husband had these silly shoes, so I can show you my cowboy boots. Look at those things. They're a little big, but they, they make the point here, I think. All right, what else is in here? Well, I hope you'll know what this is. Look at this. Yeah, these are my six shooters. These are my, this is a holster that I made for myself to wear today and my guns. So I would look more like what some people think Texans look like. Of course, Texans don't, we don't all walk around the streets, do we, with guns on and stars on and cowboy boots. But some people do. There's reasons for that. But anyway, let's just go with this. How do I look? Do I look rough and tough and Texan? I need one more thing. Do you know, 
After all these years of living in Texas, I don't have my own cowboy hat. Look at that. This is a 10-gallon hat, they say. Yes. So I'm going to put this silly old thing on. Look at this. Do I look for real? I got my cowboy boots, my 10-gallon hat, and my star. Should we get started? Yeah. All right. I hope you like this story. I think it's really a really cute and sort of a funny story, too, with a lesson in it at the end. I always take off the covers so when I tell a story so that I don't tear them. This is a picture on the front of some, a place that's very famous here in Texas called the Alamo. The Alamo. Have you ever heard of the Alamo? Yeah? Yes, it's in San Antonio, Texas. All right, let me take the cover off the book. And we'll get started. Isn't that a pretty inside cover, too? Yeah. All right, let's open it up. And my goodness, when you open up the book, there are pictures of Santa Claus. I didn't even have to say it. You know exactly who this is. What's his name again? Santa Yes. Well, this is sort of, sort of. A little bit, not, not, not mostly, but a little bit a Christmas story. That's why they put the Santas in here. Okay, let's get it started. Now, I already asked you if you had heard of Madeline, and most of you had, so you probably know how most of her stories began. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines, including Mademoiselle Madeline Fogg and Genevieve, her dog. Two days before Christmas and half past nine, a cable came for Madeline. Can you see the picture pretty well? But what he does is he leaves before he, before he dies, he leaves Madeline all a big a will and testament that gives her everything that he owns. She's going to be a very rich little girl. Wow! Jeepers! But that's aside. Here's a picture of Madeline and all the girls that she lives with, and they're crying. They're sad because the grandpapa has died. Madeline was sad at the news of her great granddad. The little girls cried, boo-hoo, and Miss Clavel said, we'll all have to go with you. So they're going to all go with Madeline over to Texas. Here's a picture of Paris, and they're going to fly over to Texas together to see what it is that Madeline has inherited since her granddad has died. Through the air they flew like a rocket and were met in Dallas by the lawyer, here he is, the lawyer, Crockett. Merry Christmas and howdy, ma'am. The name is Crockett, but you can call me Sam. So his name is Sam Crockett. Does he sound Texan? I'm trying to give him a Texan, Texas accent. Anyway. Welcome to Texas. My car's outside. I'll get you some duds and take you for a ride. So there we have it. You know, this, this hat is heavy on my head. It's bound to look silly, but that's okay, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he's gotten all the girls. Look at this. Cowboy hats, cowboy boots, blue jeans. Oh, and by the way, did you notice I've got on my overalls, right? Blue jeans are certainly a Texan thing. Let's turn the page. I may have to take this hat off if it doesn't stop sl slipping down. Wow! From here on, everything you see, Miss Madeline, is your property. Look at this. She owns all of that land and all of those cows. That's a lot for a little girl to take in. She even owns this huge gold mine. My goodness! Now watch, listen to this. These creatures on the hoof seem patient and aloof, but even the most docile breed, without warning, will stampede. Can you stampede your feet with me just for a minute? Can you go like this? Put your feet out just for just a second. 
It's all right. Wow, listen to that. That is a little bit what all these cows sound like when they are running all together. Can you imagine how loud that gets? Wow. If you don't mind, I think I'm going to take off this hat just for a few minutes until I finish this story because it's surely going to fall off when I'm not holding it. All right, let's turn the page. Look at that. Stampeding animals. Stampeding. Now, Madeline in all this, look at her face. Does she look scared? No. no. She doesn't look scared, does she? She actually looks sort of happy. And that is sort of how Madeline is in all her books. Always on the edge of danger. And that helps you to work up a right, good, healthy appetite. Are you ever very, very hungry? Do you get hungry sometimes, really, really hungry? Yeah, yeah me too. Well, you know what? What we eat, what we're known for in Texas? Get this. This is our cook. His name is Willie. He turns out a tasty bowl of chili. How many of you like chili here? Do you like chili? You like, yeah? Mm. Now, here is what I call a purdy sight. Is that an oil field? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Texas is known for its oil field and being rich in oil. Now, look at this. This next page is pretty funny because as they're standing there, something happens. Yippee-yay-yay! We're just in time to usher in a million barrel gusher. Look what's happened. Oil is going everywhere. Now, take a look at the faces of the girls. I don't think they're real happy about that because they're covered with black oil. Kind sir, the going's a bit rough. My little girls have had enough. Are they tired? Yes, you bet they're tired after all of this. Chili's one thing. Riding the, the horses for the first time, I'm sure. Okay, they are tired little girls, but that's not enough. Not enough for Mr. Crockett. But you have seen nothing. There's one thing more. I'll take you to the door of the world's greatest store. Miss Madeline, are you aware that of this store you own a share? My goodness, and that means she owns part of this store. This store, as I turn the page, get ready for this. It's huge, and it's supposed to be a picture of Neiman Marcus. Have you ever heard of the store Neiman Marcus? Well. It's a very well-known store that has lots, oh, wow, lots of stuff. Boy, those girls go in that store and they go wild, looking at all the toys and the cars. Yeah, the dresses, the games, the horses. Look at that. Remember, this is Christmas Eve, too, so they're just going bonkers in there. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Everything. Train, spaceship. This store has everything. All right, let's turn the page. But now the girls were really dead. It was time to put each one to bed. Crockett drove to the hotel. Good night, little girls. I hope you sleep well. Now, in this page, uh, on this page, can you count with me? The number of girls are supposed to be 12. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That calls for an uh oh. Can you say uh oh with me? Uh oh. Someone's missing. And who is it? Madeline. You got it. It's Madeline. Oh dear. But suddenly, Miss Clavel said, Oh dear, somewhere along the line, we've lost our little Madeline. You know, in Texas, when anyone's in danger, you call upon the Texas Ranger. Just give me the facts, ma'am. I'll do all I can. That's what he says. So she's called up the Texas Ranger. <gasps> wow. Yes, ma'am, we're looking everywhere, by land, by sea, and in the air. Look at that big Ferris wheel. Really? That's the biggest, that's called the Texas Star, and that's in Dallas. It's the biggest, I think, in North America, actually. 
Miss Clavel said, Oh dear, I fear we'll never find her from up here. But look, look at the dog. Genevieve is pointing below. Maybe that is the way to go. Do you think so? Our, our dog smart? Okay, let's pull out our dog noses, shall we? Can you smell? Sniff it out. Can you, can you, do you get the scent of Madeline anywhere? Oh, I hope so. Help, help. We must find Madeline. Well, you know where they go. They go back to the store. And they land the helicopter on top. And they began to look. And it says, suddenly, things were getting hot. That means they're getting close. Okay, let's smell again. I think they're on her. I think they're on Madeline's scent. Oh, look. Look at the flashlight and look what shows up. It says, Madeline was lying on a cot in a section of the store whereabouts was an exhibition of the girl scouts. Does she look worried? No. She's sound asleep, isn't she? All right, let's turn the page. But they found her. That's a wonderful thing. Okay. Somebody must have locked the door while Madeline was still in the store. That closes the case for us, Miss Clavel. I'll haul you back to your hotel. And look, they all get in the helicopter. Look at the doggie. There he is. Or she is, excuse me. And they're flying away. Look at that. You know what that is? It's a horsey with wings, and th those are called... Pegasus. Can you say that with me? Pegasus. Pegasus. Excellent. Excellent. The copter left. Its tail lights were red, and Madeline was finally put to bed. You see her? She's waving goodbye to the helicopter. Let's tell Madeline good night. Good night, Madeline. Good night, Madeline. That's great. Now let's turn the page. We've only got a few pages left of this story. Y'all are excellent. You've been very good. Good morning and Merry Christmas to you. You are not dreaming. All this is true. We've brought some dresses from the store for you and your friends. And what is more, here are the delivery boys with lots of wonderful dolls and toys. Enjoy it all while it is here because Christmas comes but once a year. said Madeline. And there'll be no more school. That's the best part. For who is rich is already smart. Uh-oh. You're spoiling my girls and I ask you to stop it, said Miss Clavel to the lawyer Crockett. Don't worry, ma'am. If Madeline could just sit still, you'd all bear the wisdom and hear the wisdom, excuse me, of great grandpapa's will. So I wonder what the will is going to say. Here Madeline is thinking that she's rich and she doesn't need to go to school anymore. That's not a good thing. It says, All my wealth that I give away goes to Madeline on her 21st birthday. Until then, I think it well that she go back to school with Miss Clavel. So she's going to go back to school and she'll get the money when she's old enough, right? But first things first, right? School is so important. First things first. To an old house in Paris that was covered with vines returned 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth, and they went to bed. Good night, dear children. Tomorrow we'll talk more about oil and gold and the world's greatest store. And now go to sleep, and I hope you sleep well. Good night. Good night. Dear Miss Clavel, they all said good night. Can you say good night? Good night. Good night. Good night. Dear Miss Clavel, dear, good night. Can you say it with me? Good night. Good night, dear Miss Clavel. That sounds sort of silly, doesn't it? That's okay. And here's our last page. Genevieve barked. Can you bark? There we go. The stars shone bright, and Miss Clavel turned off.
the light. What do you think of that? Was that a neat story? Y'all were so good. Now, isn't there something else I've got in here in my bag? Well, you know what I have next? I have these two songs. Oh, my goodness. I'm wondering. We have a song here called, it's about Dallas. I'm from Big D, it says. My, oh, yes. It's spelled Big D, little A, double L-A, Big D, little A, double L-A, Big D, little A, double L-A-S. Have you ever heard that song before? It's sort of an old song. I'll sing it. See, see if, it, if, you, if you recognize this at all. I'm from Big D, my oh yes. It's spelled Big D, little a double L A, Big D, little a double L A, Big D, little a double L A, yes. You think you could try that with me? Could you try and sing that with me? Yeah, let's try it. I'm from Big D, my oh yes. It's spelled Big D, little a double L A, Big D, little a double L A, Big D, little a double L A, yes, Dallas. <laughs> and that spells Dallas, and that certainly was a little high. But that's a, an old song about the town we live in. Now, the next song I bet you're may, you might be more familiar with. It says, the, the words are, the stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Does this sound familiar to you? Reminds me of the one I love, deep in the heart of Texas. Okay, now this is how it goes. The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Reminds me of, thank you, the one I love, deep in the heart of Texas. I'm going to put this down because I want you to clap along with me. Can you do that? Will you do this? Okay, now, it goes like this. Okay, yeah, we can go, let's go. Uh, the stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas Reminds me of the one I love Deep in the heart of Texas One more time, so just sing this part Deep in the heart of Texas One more time Deep in the heart of Texas Oh, even just one more time for me Deep in the heart of Texas Well, y'all are good, y'all are so good now, I bet you'd like to meet the special person we brought along with us. Miss Madeline herself is here to see you. Would you like to meet her? Yeah, there she is. Oh, Madeline. Miss Madeline, all the way from Paris, France. She'll come around, don't you worry. They're going to bring her all the way around so that you can see her. Oh, Madeline. Let's give Madeline a hand, shall we? Oh, well, it is wonderful to see you. Can I shake your hand? We're so delighted that you're here. From France, too, right? Yeah? Well, Madeline and I would like to say we are honored to have been here today. Thank you for having us at your school.